Are you ready for the crush? On this episode of the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast, we'll be discussing Lemon Crush from the Batman album. And joining me on this episode is first-time guest, Kevin Evans. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Oh, thanks for having me, Jason. You're welcome. I'm glad to have a new guest. You know, new guest equals uh, new stories, uh, new experiences, and uh, pertaining to Prince, pertaining to Batman, whatever the song that we're talking about. So I'm excited to have you on the show. But since this is your first experience, first time on the show, it would be, I'm sure, appreciated by the listeners and myself as well if you could give us a little background on who you are and kind of where you came into Prince, uh, what was your touch point with him, um, and then kind of moving towards the Batman era, since that's where we're on now, like talking about your connection to the Batman soundtrack. What did you think about it at the time it was released? Uh, what are your thoughts on the project overall before we get started on the song Lemon Crush? Sure. Um, so I, I go in the in the Wayback Machine. I actually the first song I heard from Prince was Soft and Wet in the year that it was created. I was about six years old. Um, I grew up um, I grew up in Boston, Massachusetts, and I, I still live here. And um, I don't know how much you know about Boston, but uh, there are a lot of, um, in terms of the housing, there are a lot of houses that are called like triple deckers. So I lived on the third floor of a triple decker. And on the first floor uh, lived a musician, um, a keyboard player and and a drummer. And I used to uh, float between the three floors of this house. And um, I'd always go down to the first floor and watch this musician uh, practice on his electric keyboard or, or on his synthesizers or on his drums. And um, he played in local bars, you know, in like a cover band and um he would be learning you know the hot songs of the day and soft and wet was one of them and i think that was the first time i heard um prince yeah i i didn't know what what he was singing about you know being six years old and hearing (laughs) you know hearing soft and wet but i just knew that that sound was funky um, especially on the, you know, the synthesizers, with bending the notes and things like that. And uh, this musician, um, who's who I will actually name, his name was uh, Steve Thorpe. And th- the main reason I wanted to mention him is because he actually went on to play in a group that uh, that had a little bit of fame in the early 80s. Uh, he played in the Johnson Crew, who had a hit song called pack jam and um and they also had another minor hit called space cowboy um Hmm. and uh you should check those two songs out they're uh i think they're available on on streaming but yeah they were pretty big songs kind of in the vein of uh planet rock um from africa bimbata and um just anything. Oh, cu- just sorry to interrupt. I'm going to sure. spell because for people who aren't sure how to spell Johnson Crew, it's not like J O H N S O N. It's J O N Z U N. Correct. That's yeah. correct. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, he played with that group. They had some minor hits. But um, the reason I wanted to mention him is because. He's kind of who introduced me to Prince, and anytime a new Prince project would come up, um, I would hear about it from him. He would have the album, and he'd be learning the song. So uh, that's how I heard "Soft and Wet" and "I Want to Be Your Lover" and "Dirty Mind." He, he, these were the songs that he was learning to play in, you know, in the cover band. And um, eventually, I just kind of went off on my own and started exploring the the music myself um obviously um and and then you know and then came purple rain which was the first kind of prince album that i bought with my own money um i bought the cassette and uh saw the movie was the first r-rated movie i'd ever seen (laughs) 
and uh, <laughs> I think me too, actually, to be quite honest with you. And though, and I wasn't supposed to be watching it either. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually remember seeing it in the movie theater, um, and uh, coming home and playing that cassette to death, and and um, that was the one. Uh, yeah, Purple Rain is what what uh, really like cemented Prince's. You know, this is someone I'm going to follow for the rest of his career. And um, from that point, I actually went back and bought all of the older stuff um, on cassette. Uh, and um, and yeah, and then from that point on, like whenever I knew the a new release was coming out, that's when, I, you know, I was first in line at a store to buy it. So, so you were anticipating Batman when it came out then in real time. I was. It was um, actually Batman, the Batman project. I think I was more interested in the songs that would be created for it than the movie itself. I had not actually been a comic book fan or anything like that. So I'd never read Batman. I'd obviously heard of Batman from like the old television series and things like that. But, um, I actually became excited because because Prince was going to be part of the project. And um, so, yeah, that was, uh, you know, Prince is what has kind of started my love for Batman, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah, it was a it, it was. Um, yeah, great to to um, just learn about Batman and 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 things like that and. I have to admit, though, I was a bit disappointed that not a lot of the music from the soundtrack actually ended up in the movie itself. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, and actually, this is one. Lemon Crush is one of the songs that I don't believe has any place in the film at all. Like, not even a, a small snippet of the music or anything. I think it's pretty much completely relegated to the soundtrack, and we don't hear the song in the movie. Yeah, we don't. We don't at all. Um, yeah, I, th- I want to say there's like really only like three songs from the album that show up in the movie. Three or at four. Least, yeah, at least uh, in in a significant role. I mean, mm-hmm. there's I guess you can hear pieces of some songs allegedly in in certain scenes. But like the ones that everybody points to are the party man scene, mm-hmm. trust, mm-hmm. You know, scandalous in the closing credits. Um but those are like the three main ones and there's yeah. a little bit of snippets i think of of the future and a remix of vicky waiting in the in a scene but boy you know it's almost like a blink if you know you don't can't see music but it's it's a similar experience blink and you'll miss it um for this the snippets of music that made it into the film for those songs so really it's just the three the three main musical pieces that i cited already so yeah 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 so what did you think about the soundtrack like the music that was on the soundtrack when you heard it because batman can be i i've said this in previous episodes some people really feel like this is where the the quality dip Mm -hmm. begins um and i don't know if that's just because they're riding on such high highs throughout the 80s and when you release you know four or five masterpieces anything Mm -hmm. that's just merely good is going to seem like you know a quality dip or you know a drop in in quality but what did you think about it in real time in real time i i don't know i I, i'm trying to remember way back you know (laughs) you don't have vivid (laughs) memories of 1989 it's it's not a long time it i mean it was a long time ago so i just remember i just remember the album coming out and you know, like any Prince release, I just bumped it hard for a long time, yeah. you know, and I was one of those fans who like anything that came out, you know, um, I just, you know, loved it from, you know, start to finish. Yes, it has its its low points like. Um, uh, actually, kind of like the song that <laughs> we're going to be doing today and um and Arms of Orion, which, you know, a, a lot of fans of, of Prince didn't uh, care for that much. 
but um yeah i just you know i played it hard when it came out but you know as the years one went on it wasn't an album i came back to a lot um and even like it didn't even really have any songs at least for me that well at least i could go back and like put this song on a mixtape or uh, put it in some type of playlist that i'm going to listen to it's like this is one of those albums where when i do listen to it i listen to it from back to front um kind of maybe once a year or something like that but um yeah i just i do remember though playing it really hard you know when it mm-hmm. first came out sure sure yeah it was it was the latest and greatest from you know one of your favorite artists so i think that's fair fair assessment okay well thanks thanks for sharing that did you have anything else you wanted to communicate to the listeners about who you are and what you're all about before we get started talking about the song uh no let's uh let's just go ahead and get started on this one all right let's do it okay so lemon crush is the song that we're talking about in this episode um we're getting towards you know the end of the album we got two more songs after this and lemon crush was a song that was originally re- you know recorded and intended for the batman soundtrack so it's not a repurposed song as far as we know i mean there's no record of it doesn't doesn't you know we're just going based off of what has been kind of documented at this point so what we believe and what we understand about the song is that it was written especially for the batman soundtrack recorded in early 1989 around the same time that Prince was recording other Batman songs like The Future and, you know, the revamped version of Anna Waiting, which turned into Vicky Waiting. And with all the songs off the Batman soundtrack, they're all, you know, um, attributed to a character from the film in terms of who, what perspective that the Prince is singing from. And this is the only song on the album that is solely coming from the perspective of Vicky Vale. Of course, we had Vicky with Bruce Wayne on the arms of Orion. Uh, as that duet but this is this is supposed to be a vicky song so keep that in mind as we're singing or as we're talking about the 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 lyrics to the song and also i think when you're listening to it um, because that's not really part of what we do on the show i think prince kind of put some affectations on his voice to make it sound maybe a little bit more feminine um, knowing that this is coming from a woman uh, supposed to be coming from a woman so keep that in mind female perspective not the first time prince has ever written a song from a female perspective this is something he was very uh, good at and and had done for years and years with you know his other protégés vanity and sheila e and apollonia and jill jones and you know eventually later on maite and martika and ingrid chavez just the list goes on and on and on you know uh, bria valente and uh, et cetera et cetera so writing songs from a female perspective is is not uncommon for prince so it's not like he had to really kind of dig deep into his uh, creative wheelhouse to come up with this concept um <clears throat> the other thing i wanted to mention like the song title lemon crush uh i don't know about you kevin but allegedly there's a drink out there called lemon crush it's kind of in the same vein from the same you know formula and manufacturer of Orange Crush, which is, I think is a more common and more well-known version of this this soda, this pop. I not familiar with Lemon Crush. I imagine it tastes somewhat similar to like a, you know, like a lemon lime soda, like your Sprites or your Seven Ups or something like that. Have you ever t- tried a Lemon Crush before? Um, I have never tried a Lemon Crush before, and I've actually actually never heard of of uh a soda version of it i only know yeah. kind of lemon crush as a as an alcoholic beverage um, Ooh, what do you know what that uh, entails i to be honest i do not i i did try to look up um i looked up a couple of recipes and i want to say one had like some vodka and some triple sec in it and uh another one had uh i, I want to say coconut water or something like that in it Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've only heard of it as a, as an alcoholic beverage <laughs> to be honest. So 
Yeah, no, I same here, honestly. And I had to do some research and digging to even find like an example of a a bottle of it, you know, from the whenever it was made. So my guess is that it's not still being manufactured. Maybe mm. uh, I could be wrong. Of course, throughout the world, different different pops are out there, and um, you know, soda caffeinated, non caffeinated carbonated beverages exist throughout the world that i'm not familiar with so somebody clue me in if if i'm wrong and there's a lemon crush out there still being made but i never ever see it uh, in stores and allegedly this is this was anna garcia aka anna fantastic's favorite drink favorite beverage and how the story goes is that prince was inspired by that because this is the same time that he's you know starting his kind of romantic and and professional relationship with her she's now in minneapolis full-time in early 89 with him so it, it makes sense from a timing perspective that he would name a song after a drink that she liked because he was enamored with her and liked her so um, i buy the story whether it's true or not i don't know but i buy it um, but yeah that's allegedly how the name of the song and the inspiration for the lyrics were uh, derived. Whether there's truth to that or not is up to the, to the listeners to decide for yourselves. Um, okay, so I think the big question about this song is what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> 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 because Lemon Crush, okay, it's a Drake. We, we, whether it's you know a soda or or an alcoholic beverage it's a drink at the end of the mm-hmm. day but he's obviously not using it in that context it's a euphemism or it's some sort has some sort of double entendre meaning to it uh and i think what we'll probably end up spending a large percentage of this episode is talking about maybe some different options of what this could be mm-hmm. Uh, based off of context clues, based off of, you know, the perspective of the person he's singing from, just knowing Prince and Prince's writing. So that, I think, is the uh, like the key question about this song is, what the hell is Lemon Crush? And what does it have to do with this song? So, I mean, would you agree? Is it, It's not very clear to me, at least. Um, I came up with a couple of theories. Uh, they, okay, but and they, the they, fact they, that you had to call them theories means that they're not proven, which means that you're in the same boat as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've I've got a couple of ideas, and and they all actually just lead to the same thing, uh, both of the <laughs> ideas. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll probably be very similar uh, ideas and theories as well between you and I. Okay, so the right off the the, the very beginning of the song, you know, you get the um, kind of a operatic performance of ready for the crush (laughs) and so that's how it starts ready for the crush for those who didn't understand what i said earlier in the episode um and it's kind of like a statement like ready for the crush it's not like a question uh are you ready for the crush it's like ready for the crush at least that's how i interpret it like i don't know but the way that the the vocals kind of move up and down the register it could be perceived as a question like instead of ready for the crush are you ready for the crush? But removing the, you know, the first word of that of that question, um, I don't know it's, if it makes any difference or not. But do you see it as a question or a statement, Kevin? I, it's it's funny, you know, when I first heard this song, um, and as I've listened to it over the years, I actually never understood exactly what he was saying there because mm, it's fair, because it's weird. Yeah, it's performance. It's like. Yeah, you like you hear the word crush. Like I hear that part very clearly, but I never got the ready for the crush. And I always sometimes I hear it as like, "Are you ready for the crush?" And sometimes mm-hmm. I just hear it as "ready for the crush." Yeah, like I'm here for it. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. yeah. For the longest time, I had no idea what was being said. At, it sounded in some ways like something that was being played backwards, except for the word crush. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. 
because all I hear is crush. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It is. It is sung oddly. And I believe I was with you for a while until I found the like I got the CD version of the album and in the CD version of the album, you got the printed lyrics. So then, Mm -hmm. you know, if you take the time to look at it, then you can look at I don't remember the cassette version having maybe it did but boy trying to read those lyrics <clears throat> on those little printed cassette uh, fold out paper is not not the easiest um even when you're a kid or younger with better eyes it's not easy so anyway yeah good, and, good and actually <laughs> actually one thing i want to mention uh, um on the lyrics in the book it actually doesn't put that line in there at least it my doesn't. copy you know the the uh yeah. Uh, I'm looking at the book right now, and it just starts with with the chorus, um, but it doesn't clearly say "ready for the crush." Gosh, I wonder how I figured it out then. That's I one of those out... things where. Oh no, Sergey, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say uh, I figured it out um, just going to Genius Lyrics. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of one of those um, fake memories. That mm-hmm. sometimes we create for ourselves. I just assumed that I had figured it out because of the printed lyrics. But if you're saying it's not in there, so then that's not how I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Lord only knows then. Because mm. I don't remember. Because obviously my brain is tricking me into thinking that's how I figured it out. Um, but yeah, after that, then the song does go straight into the chorus. As you kind of mentioned by looking at the lyrics in the, in the CD, CD book. And the, the chorus is, Every time you kiss me. Lemon crush. Nay, I can't resist thee. Lemon crush. Every time you do me, such a rush. Ooh, it goes right through me. Lemon crush. And that's the chorus, and that chorus will get repeated several times throughout the song, so get used to it. (laughs) That that, that chorus is repeated quite often. Yes. Uh, So, now we're, we're, again, keeping in mind this is a song from the perspective of Vicki Vale. And she's talking about every time you kiss me, every time you do me, such a rush goes right through me. So you're getting the impression a little bit that, you know, she's singing, you know, about um, her relationship with Bruce Wayne. One has to assume because that's really the only relationship she has in the film, um, romantic relationship she has in the film. So. You know, what we're supposed to, I think, get is that she's it's her expressing, you know, verbalizing her emotions when she's with Bruce, when they kiss, when they make love, when, you know, all of this stuff, when they are together, she gets like these, um, you know, these these feelings, the romantic feelings, she has such a rush. And um, this is where, like, the debate about what does Lemon Crush mean here in the context of this song? Because he he, he kind of uh, uh, puts at the end of each sentence or each line, like as an emphasis or as a punctuation, lemon crush. So you have to kind of assume that lemon crush is like an experience or a feeling or something along those lines or, you know, a sensation. That's what I'm assuming. And that's what I think we're probably will be debating back and forth here. But is that I mean, before before we start getting into what does Lemon Crush mean? Is that kind of what your thoughts are on the course? It's like she says these lines and then she punctuates them with Lemon Crush or Prince punctuates them with Lemon Crush. So we kind of get that impression that she's trying to express or like verbalize something that's very difficult to to verbalize. Yeah, that's how I, I take it. Um, yeah, for me, um in a nutshell, I, I feel like the 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 chorus kind of spells everything out in in terms of you know what the song's about. And and for me, it's the song is really just kind of about how horny Vicky Vale is. <laughs> yeah, horny for for Bruce. Yep. Yep. Just and and maybe not even just for Bruce, just for for. For, just for in just, general, <laughs> yeah, just in general, for just for some for a connection, huh. um, 
I'm I'm thinking she's just horny for for any type of connection. Um, and and I'll explain, I guess, later on in the lyrics. Um, uh, further down in the lyrics, I I I think, I for the most part, it is for Bruce, but I think she's. Yeah, I I think she just wants some type of connection with 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 somebody, someone who's mm-hmm. going to be there. Um and it may be Bruce or it may be someone further down the line after you know, she realizes that, you know, things might not work out for them. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Um yeah, for sure. That definitely put a pin in that one and we'll get back to it when when it makes more sense or the most sense based off of the lyrics we're reading but just like the line such a rush every time you do me such a rush you know rush rhymes with crush and she's kind of using them uh those two words uh, interchangeably in the chorus so again i've just always kind of gotten a general feeling just from listening to the chorus without any other lyrics that she's kind of getting a rush of excitement you know that's where the rush comes from and and if it's really named after a soda or, you know, you're thinking of that as kind of like your starting point. Um, sodas have, you know, unless they're diet, they have a lot of sugar in them. <laughs> they're very filled with sugar. And I also get the imagery of like a sugar rush, but applying that to a romantic situation. So the equivalent of a sugar rush, but for, you know, uh, connection or sex or, you know, physical intimacy, something along those lines is it's almost like trying to use terminology that you're using for like consumption of a beverage, but applying it to, you know, like I said, a, a physical, physical act or physical intimacy or even a caffeine rush. I mean, like those, those, um, fruity sodas aren't usually very caffeinated, but you could also think of it from that perspective as well. Yeah. I, I find it interesting that you, you mentioned sugar um, because, you know, it's called lemon crush and and lemons are sour. And when we first talked about doing this episode, I'm thinking, you know, let's break down the the title of the song. What what exactly does lemon crush mean? You know, lemons are sour and, and crush means like, you know, when you crush something, it's broken. Um, so I was, I don't know, part of me was thinking that, you know, just the whole thing about, you know, again, I guess this goes back to my thinking of, of her just looking for a connection because her thinking about um, Bruce or, or something like that and knowing that she can't really have him because he's off fighting crime. That's the sour part is that she can't have him because he's too busy doing something else. And and therefore she's kind of broken or crushed or things like that. So, but, Mm -hmm. but having that, you know, thinking of something kind of sweet about it, you know, that's a, another interpretation of a you know of of you know especially with that line you know every time you do me such a rush um so yeah i i, I just find it interesting that you went sweet and i i kind of went the sour way <laughs> well i mean <laughs> combine it together and you've got kind of almost like an, an, a bittersweet um experience mm-hmm. and that that could certainly be where this is intended to be a bit a bittersweet kind of feeling for Vicky. She's excited and it's very you know, the sugar part is that how sweet he is when they're together and how exciting it is when they're together and how she feels when they're together. But the bitter part is the fact that he also has this uh, alter ego that is ultimately going to get in the way of probably a meaningful long-term relationship. Um it's dangerous for him and and tangentially for her as well <laughs> just being around him mm-hmm. and uh the, you know there's the the bittersweet aspects of that and when you think of like any time you make a drink lemonade uh any kind of lemon beverage you gotta add a lot of sugar to it to 
to balance out the tartness and the sour uh, flavors that go along with that um, that fruit. So, you know, by default, inherently, you have to add a lot of sugar to balance it out. So there's there's that that fine line, that balance that you have to make with any kind of lemon based beverage. Um, otherwise, you know, you go too sweet put too much sugar in then it's just like ugh, it's undrinkable but then if you don't put enough sugar in oof, it just you know makes your mouth pucker and and it's also undrinkable so it's a balancing act and maybe that's potentially what uh you know was trying to he's trying to convey by calling the song lemon crush and, and using that that phrase over and over throughout the song to kind of just as a, like a placeholder for whatever it is that she's experiencing or feeling so I think there's there's definitely some I mean, we we both came to it from a different angle, but I think they're both valid and they're probably both uh, aspects of what the song is intended to to be about, I think. Mm. Yeah. A mixture of pleasure and pain or sadness to go along with it because of the nature of the relationship and who they are. One last thing about the chorus, and it, it just came to me uh, mainly because you, you mentioned that, you know, Lemon Crush was like a favorite drink of of uh of Anna Fantastic and um I'm thinking of the line oh it goes right through me I'm just thinking you know she would drink so much that she'd have to you know go to the bathroom all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah funny right because otherwise I mean that's exactly what I think about when something goes right through you you use that when you consume something and you're basically you know using the restroom immediately afterwards or shortly afterwards because it went right through you. I mean, that's that's the phrase people use when that happens. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that so that one. Yeah, that one line just has that double meaning of, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a it's a, you know, a feeling of euphoria for, you know, this, you know, whatever she has for for this man. Um, but then, yeah, the, you know, needing to take a bio break all the time. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the multiple meanings of even just the word crush. Mm hmm. I mean, crush can be something that's devastating. Like I was crushed. That person dumped me and I'm crushed by that. Or, of course, it could mean like the physical act of crushing something which you've already alluded to. I think it can, uh, of course, then it has the romantic um, meaning as well. Like I have a crush on somebody mm -hmm. or, you know, this person, I have a romantic interest in them, a.k.a. a crush. And then uh, there may even be another one that's more sexually uh related or you know some sort of euphemism for sex like to crush something or crush her i mean i know the, the term is smash like to smash is to have sex <laughs> and i'm like is yeah. there maybe a crush <laughs> and smash can be interchangeable and in referring to sex i don't know I, i've never used that term for it but maybe somebody out there has maybe maybe it was a slang term that i just wasn't familiar with i don't know yeah. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, <laughs> so we'll just leave it out there and <laughs> see if anybody else can confirm or like, no, dude, that's not. Nobody ever calls having sex crushing. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm okay with that, too, if that ultimately is what people say. Although someone could say, oh, I crushed it last night or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. To crush something also means to like knock it out of the park or, mm -hmm. you know, do a do an amazing job. So just a, it's a very versatile word let's put it that way <laughs> very versatile word okay so then after the chorus um we get one of like basically only two verses in the song this isn't this isn't one of the like the most lyrically deep songs on the album which some might point to this as being one of the song's weaknesses and maybe why it doesn't register or speak to them as being one of the stronger songs on the album that's obviously completely totally opinion and a matter of taste and subjectivity but just putting that out there if if i read these lyrics and you're like oh that's not very uh deep or that doesn't seem to have a lot of um you know interesting wordplay and they're like yeah <laughs> it doesn't really <laughs> so it's pretty much on right up front um that kind of song so first verse is all it takes a little bitty of your ooh pretty pretty i'm the wildest in the city Ooh, pretty pretty one come on come on i'm ready for the crush and i will say when i listen to the song now you know or not now but knowing that it's coming from the perspective of vicky vale he's prince seems to kind of have like this breathy 
vocal delivery for these. Like he's almost singing a little bit under his breath or like he's singing it very coyly, um, trying to be, I don't know, maybe a, come off a little more feminine than he does on some of the other songs on the album. Is that just me or do you get that as well? Yeah, now that you mention it, I, I do kind of notice that, um, that it is kind of breathy um, when he sings it. And and um, one of the things that I was thinking about um, when in preparing for the show was um, where, you know, where was Vicky when when she's thinking these thoughts or, or saying these words? And I, I'm kind of imagining her like in her bed um, at night or something like that. And she is just, you know, thinking these thoughts, you know, as she's, you know, doing whatever. And well, I'll put it out there. She could be masturbating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly where I was going. And, and, uh, and yeah she's you know in bed doing her thing and these are the things that she's thinking and and um all it takes is a bitty it just take and 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 this is a, a this is another thought i was thinking you know throughout the song i feel like the song is a lot about what's not being said like i feel like every line that's being said in the song is like half of a thought and it's up to the listener to fill in what's being said after that so all it takes is a little bitty a little bitty of what and we have to think of what that what is yeah of your ooh pretty pretty well pretty pretty what yeah exactly yes, yes. <laughs> it's ha- it's like half a line half a thought and she's not being i keep saying she prince is not being uh, super eloquent here Mm-hmm. He's not he's not using uh, grand language and poetic, uh, you know, creativity with these lyrics. It's like you said, it feels like it's just somebody who's almost like in heat. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. And, and they can't and, and, and words aren't really important. It's not mm-hmm. about the words. It's about the feeling. And and they're not really interested in trying to convey that in a very like I said, eloquent manner. It's more just about, I'm feeling, oh, you know, like, oh my God, I'm feeling like so, oh, you know, <laughs> and, and you could just imagine somebody doing that in bed. And these are the kind of things that, that come out of their mouth because it's not about the words. Mm-hmm. It's about the actions and the emotions and, and the feelings that they're, you know, that they're experiencing at that time. So I'm, I'm totally with you. Like these lyrics seem underwritten but it might be might be by design because they're coming from somebody who is really <laughs> horny for horny <laughs> at the moment and doesn't really have the capacity to to be um, you know verbose with with their expression of horniness. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, a uh, 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 second ago you you just kind of uh, moaned and. Uh, something that we forgot to mention with the with the chorus is right before it always begins there's the uh uh mm-hmm. every yeah. time you yeah. kiss me you know <laughs> so th- I, I think the the um yeah she she's in heat she can't keep a, a a single thought in her head and these are just the little things that are coming out and and uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I get from from all the lines, and because they're they're not they're not complete thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and the last line of the of that verse, "I'm ready for the crush," is basically like if you're saying you're ready for it and you're calling it the crush, this is where you can apply the crush meaning sex or dick I mean, yeah <laughs> if, we're, if we're really gonna get like yeah you know if we're really gonna get explicit yeah she could be actually say i'm ready ready for it and this is mm-hmm. what i'm ready for i'm ready for explicitly the sexual act of intercourse mm-hmm. or i'm ready mm-hmm. or, or 
you know, I'm ready for whatever, whatever Bruce does to make her feel good. And you can use your imagination for whatever that could be. So I'm ready for the crush and whatever that is, is I'm ready for this person to be with me sexually and, you know, give me the release that I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, one, <clears throat> one other thing I want to mention the, the line, I'm the wildest in the city. Um, for that line, I was thinking she's like, you know what? I'm, I'm a hot, I'm a hot piece of shit here. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and all the guys want me and, you know, she's, she's out there, you know, the animal out there and everyone's hunting her. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. And, and when you think about the, the movie, you know, you've got the reporter, uh, Knox, who's kind of after her, the Joker is after her and Bruce is after her. Um, so, you know, she's, she's out there and, and, you know, the men are hunting her. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It does. Using the term wild does give it a little more of a, like an animalistic flair of the lyrics where you're thinking more just primal, um, attraction, as opposed to like intellectual attraction or, you know, something more sophisticated. It it breaks it down using a term that you typically use for animals, you know, a wild animal versus a tame animal. And, uh, you know, the, the, what that implies, I think is a little bit more of like that animalistic urges that are on display here in this song. That's what I get at least. Yep. That's, that's exactly what I got. Um, okay, so anything else about that verse, Kevin? Um, not that I can think of. I mean, I, I did write a quick note on the line, ooh, pretty, pretty one. And I okay. was thinking, I was thinking, you know, is she imagining at that point what uh, what these, you know, hunters are, are saying about her? You know, yeah, they're the ones who pretty pretty earlier talking about takes a little bitty of your ooh pretty pretty and you can mm-hmm. impl- you can assume maybe what she means there but then to use it later after she says i'm the wildest of the city ooh pretty pretty one yeah it does kind of make you think she's referring to herself so yeah I, I didn't think if she was thinking about herself or is that what she's thinking about them um maybe yeah so it's not clear <laughs> it's yeah. not clear at all so yeah, yeah, it could be. I mean, Prince later wrote a song called "Pretty Man" mm-hmm. uh, in reference to himself. So yep. I think it wouldn't be a, a outside of his capacity to write a song where he's talking about another man or himself as a pretty person, a pretty mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. So you know, it doesn't have to just be a term used to um, you know describe a woman. It certainly, can be described for a man too. Definitely. <laughs> So one other thing we haven't mentioned yet regarding lemons and also the use of the word lemon. We talked about it, you know, as a drink, beverage, you know, uh, maybe a euphemism for something, but never really quite also getting to uh, talk about specifically what that could be a euphemism for. Now, I don't totally get that from this song. You know, lemon crush could just simply mean like, I mean, if you if you are, if you're thinking of it as a euphemism and to say, you know, I, every time you kiss me, lemon crush, I can't resist the lemon crush goes right through me. Lemon crush is lemon crush basically her way of saying getting fucked. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's getting fucked. I, I think it's. I think lemon crush is, is supposed to be the orgasm. It very well could be, but the only reason why I, and, and I, that was my initial thought too. I, I wrote down orgasm, euphemism for orgasm, question mark. Mm-hmm. But then we have examples of songs in the past where lemon has been used as a euphemism for the penis. Um, Robert Johnson kind of kicked that off with his song, Traveling Riverside Blues, uh, where he refers to squeezing my lemon. And as, you know, basically saying you know, it's going to become an ejaculating penis as a result of that. And then Led Zeppelin, of course, was very famous for using old blues songs and blues acts as the basis for a lot of their early music. 
and they had a song called the lemon song in the lemon song robert plant famously sings squeeze my lemon till the juice runs down my leg mm. so these are all very clear <laughs> euphemisms yeah. for for penises uh, specifically ejaculating penises so whether or not prince is applying that same euphemism in this song when it's coming from the perspective of a woman maybe not maybe it's a bit of a stretch but i can't we can't deny that you know lemons have been put out there in modern music in the you know fairly recent past in the last 50 to 70 years and um and to, to ignore that i think would be a mistake as well so have to put it out there <laughs> yeah it makes sense to me um <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I don't think I've ever heard those two songs. So, yeah, it, it totally makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was like I wasn't listening to blues music from the 40s and 50s and whatever. So it was Led Zeppelin that led me to Robert Johnson, not vice versa. But that's just more because of my age. But, <clears throat> yeah, um, it's very, you know, they were they were kind of like pushing boundaries at mm-hmm. that time both of them were pushing boundaries at that time to to try to put some um explicit content on their lyrics without anybody really catching wind of it or noticing it because of you know the the euphemisms being used and the double entendres and and people not catching that but we're we're a bit more i wouldn't say sophisticated listeners but we certainly with the ability to transcribe lyrics and pour over them I mean, I have a whole podcast about it. It's yeah. a lot easier to like read a line, read a line again, read a line again, look at it in context with the rest of the song, and then decide for yourself, oh shit, he's talking about that. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> Where when you're just listening to a song and it's buried under some, you know, blues guitar, maybe you're not really catching catching it so so easily. All right, um, so putting that out to the listeners, what do you think <laughs> Lemon is referred to in this song? Maybe it's a mixture of all of the above. Maybe it's just a general thought of sex, and you know, you can look at it from a female perspective or a, woman, or a male perspective. Yeah. Of course, the only other verse uh, is interesting because of the way his Prince is phrasing here. So, so the lyrics are, if I'm working at my job, I'm the victim, you're the robber. No matter how much I try to stop a, I can't help think about you. Lemon crush. I'm ready for the crush. Um, all right. So with the second verse, Kevin, what are what do you want to point out here? What do you think is interesting about this? He kind of just sums up every like he in the third line of that. He basically just sums up what he said. Or is it the fourth line? He, he just kind of sums up what he said you know, the three lines before that, you know, this person's just on my mind and uh, just can't get them out of my head. And, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm at work or wherever. Um, Yeah, I just, you know, just can't stop thinking about (laughs) you. Yeah, there's this for this for this verse, there there wasn't really much to, to kind of mull over he just kind of states you know everything pretty pretty plainly here yeah she's she's got she's got him on her mind and Mm -hmm. she's just giving examples like doesn't matter what i'm doing like you already said if i'm working if i'm at home if i'm in the shower if i'm in bed at night and watch tv whatever i'm doing no matter how i try to how much i try to stop thinking about you i can't because she's excited by him you know, turned on and she's ready for the crush. I think the the one line here that I find somewhat interesting is just the uh, I'm the victim, you're the robber, because just um, putting in the context of the Batman movie, like there's so much crime in, in Gotham City and Batman. And for her to put herself in the in the victim in the victim's shoes, but as kind of like a kink <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. a little bit as opposed to like oh i'm scared i'm the victim joker's gonna kill me or one of his henchmen no i'm the victim you're the robber and i like it yeah you know? <laughs> it's, it's kind of like role play yeah i always took that line as you know in terms of i'm the victim you're the robber you know it's her brain and he's invading it um mm-hmm. and 
you know, he's, she's got a, well, actually she's not a writer. She's a foot photographer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, she works for the daily planet No, not daily planet. That's Superman. That's Superman. <laughs> um, I think it's the daily bugle, <laughs> although they, I don't think they, they or, or the Gothic Gotham times or something. Um, but, um, but yeah, it, it, she, you know, he's taken, you know, he's taken just, the time away from what she should really be focusing on. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, totally. so that he's, so he's just, you know, he's robbing every thought in her head. So, yeah, it's clever. That's why I like pointed out. Cause I think it's one of the more clever lines in the song in a song that doesn't have a lot of clever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> clever lines. Yeah. I like, I think it's one of the more clever ones. And I just like how he makes sure to rhyme all of these lines, even though they might not, logically line uh they might not logically rhyme java raba stapa yeah i always thought that was the cheesiest thing (laughs) (laughs) well it's it's a very it's it's a very cheap way to make things rhyme like if you're writing the lyrics and you want them to rhyme oh well how do you get two words to rhyme that don't normally rhyme you make some fake word up yeah yeah um, or you add some affectation at the end to each of the words so that they ultimately rhyme, even though they don't really. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so yeah, that's pretty straightforward uh, verse there, talking about her feelings and how they're basically overwhelming her uh, and everything that she does to the point where she feels like she's a victim of his, um, you know, his the victim of the attraction that she has for him. And we get then the the chorus again every time he kiss me lemon crush nay i can't resist thee which also is like a strange phrasing nay i can't resist thee mm-hmm. i don't i don't put too much thought into it but i just thought i'd point it out because it is it is unique every time you do me such a rush oh it goes right through me lemon crush he repeats some lines like every time every time we trails off because this again kind of goes back there's a few lines here where Prince trails off. He says things like, I'm running out of things to call your lemon crush. Don't want to do without your. Ain't no doubt about your. Let's scream and shout your. So like a lot of trailing off, kind of like in that first verse where you're just kind of getting half thoughts, half expressions. And again, is it because of lazy writing or didn't really feel like finishing the (laughs) sentence? Or is he trying to convey, again, somebody who is just extremely turned on or extremely preoccupied with thoughts of uh, this person or just sex in general that they can't even finish a sentence yeah exactly that's that's what i was thinking you know because when you look in the in the lyric sheet you know those lines actually have dots after them where you know where you get the trailing off so you get dot you get your and then dot 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 and it's up to the listener to to kind of figure out what to fill in at that point. So it's like, I'm running out of things to call oh, you. <laughs> and it's like, well, what, what do you, you know, what is she thinking of calling? You know, yeah. you know, she's running out of things to call him in, in terms of a term of endearment or something like that. Or is See, she I running? Think he's, I think she's talking. I, I don't know. I, women out there are probably listening to me like, you're a guy. Of course, you're going to think that. <laughs> but I think she's talking about his dick. I really do. <laughs> I'm running out of things to call your because he says your. Yeah. I'm running out of things to call your. Call mm-hmm. your what? I mean, don't want to do without your. And, you know, and he's, there's some lines in Lemon Crush, you know, in the background. And you know, this is written by a man. So yeah. also yeah. you have to come. Sure, it's from the perspective of a woman, but it's it's written by a man so a man might be like yeah i've got you know i've got that good d man and i (laughs) and she's and she needs it and she's and she wants to really kind of uh or she's so you know hooked on it that she's basically a blabbering idiot because it's so good yeah wouldn't that be like (laughs) the most flattering kind of song to have a woman sing back to you if you're a guy Mm -hmm. is how good you are in bed that she can't stop thinking about you and wants to give your dick pet names <laughs> and can't stop thinking about it. 
Yeah, and, uh, she, so and even one theory. Even the, yeah, even the line "Ain't no doubt about your," and it's like no doubt about you know your prowess or your you know, you know what you bring to this you know to this bed you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's really what it is. I think. I mean, yes, part of it is the penis, but it's also people will say that women will say that, but they're not. They may not literally just be talking about that organ. Mm-hmm. I think they're, it's it's more like a quick and easy way to just summarize or describe just the overall experience of sex with that person. Um, it's not just literally about that, but it's it is um, one way to describe it and one way to um, you know to phrase it. But really, it's more about the overall like how they how good of a lover they are how good they are in bed Mm -hmm. and it's not just about the dick but it can be part of that that's just one of many things that that person does well to please me to pleasure me to make me feel good and to make me enjoy the experience but i didn't really think that i was going to be uh using the word dick and penis (laughs) as much in this song kevin i I did not come into this episode (laughs) with this assumption (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I, you know, I was writing my notes. I, you know, I did, I did write, you know, penis and and dick and cock a lot <laughs> in my notes. And <laughs> it's hard I, to not. I, I erased them and came up with more, you know, family appropriate ones. So <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just have to like put it out there in the least family friendly way possible <laughs> to get your point across. I would yeah. be interested in getting a woman's perspective on this. Like these are we're, we're two men talking about this and it was written by a man. Women, what have you I mean, are we completely off base with this? What do you think? Like please comment, write in, let me know what you think. Like it, it, throughout listening to a song and dissecting the lyrics and kind of breaking it down the way we have, are we missing something obvious to you? Um or even to any other man who's like, you guys are maybe a little off or, you know, it's one logical theory, but is it the only one? And that's really what sometimes uh, I want to make sure that people understand about this show is there's always going to be more than one, you know, perspective on these lyrics. And so, and there's going to be more than two perspectives on these lyrics. Like me and my guests sometimes might be on the same page, but, That doesn't mean we're right just because we agree with each other. So I would love to hear other perspectives on this song because it is uh, it is one that really is leaves it open to interpretation. And so wherever that person's coming from, that's listening to it and dissecting it, it's going to it's going to frame their their perspectives and what they think the song is about. So. Just wanted to <laughs> make sure that we're definitely not saying 100% this is what this song's about. And uh, if you don't have a dirty mind, you don't get it. <laughs> of course, we're Prince fans, so we always have dirty minds. Well, he, you know, it's not like it's not like he hasn't set a precedence for himself up to this point. So it's his own fault for yeah. us going down this path. Um, but yeah, though, I mean, those are like towards the end of the song, like those uh, kind of, they're not really ad libs because they're printed in the book. So we have to assume that he wrote them, you know, I'm running out of things to call you or don't want to do without you or ain't no doubt about you or let's scream and shout you or, and then, you know, lots more repeating of I'm ready, ready for, ready for the crush. I'm ready. I like it. I like it. Baby, I'm ready. Uh, there's one line every time you do me and then. He says, do me, baby, which yep, the call back to do me, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wanted to make sure I called that out here as well, because it does seem like a throwaway line. But, you know, it's coming from a man who wrote a song or you know, co-wrote a song, depending on who you believe wrote do me, baby. So, yeah, call back to do me, baby there. Uh, and there's another line just again, probably a throwaway, but I was kind of confused me a little bit. Uh, he says. Ah, uh, that's her. I'm like, huh? That's her. Well, yeah. This is coming from Vicky Vale. Who's who's her? I don't know. Yeah, I forgot maybe it's just about a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. Maybe he forgot that he was writing from the perspective of of Vicky and left it in there. I don't know. I haven't given it too much thought just because it's towards the end of the song and it's just one little brief line in between lemon crushes. 
Um, but yeah, then we get a whole bunch of repeating of the chorus again until the song ends, and the last line of the song is the you know repeat of the first line of the song, "Ready for the Crush," sung in that strange kind of backward sounding way. That's the song, Kevin. That, that's the song. <laughs> uh, okay, so I kind of rushed through towards the end of the song, so I want to give you a chance to, you know, give me whatever thoughts that you had on the song or on the lyrics or anything that we haven't um, kind of expressed or touched on already. Yeah, I, I don't have much to say about the the end of the song. I mean, it, it kind of is what it is. I You know, I, I see that whole kind of last part is... Um, you know, she's kind of climaxing and, you know, she goes, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then and then you hear, oh, and then every time you do me, do me, baby, you know, that that's the climax right there where where, you know, she's sure. pretty much done. And that's that's what I get from that part of the song. So, um, yeah. Yeah, but. But in it. terms of the the song overall, um, I think I wanted to give a few thoughts about um, some things, and and a lot of it actually comes from you know the episode on on um, Vicky waiting. So you know yeah. Vicky, you know with with Vicky waiting, we've got kind of Bruce's perspective on on this relationship and things like that, and. You know, he does talk about, you know, sex a little bit with uh, uh, you and Julian had the conversation about, uh, you know, pistols and things like that. Um, but Vicky Waiting is a more kind of introspective song, you know, like, how am I going to make this relationship last and things like that? But this one is just pure lust and 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 things like that so i just find it interesting that you know because typically you you think of of uh uh, of a woman as probably having that more introspective uh point of view and and the male being more i you know i gotta get i gotta get that you know, yeah, driven and, driven by more primal urges. Yeah, exactly. So I, I just find it found it interesting, you know, that 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 shift there between those two songs. Um, um, the other thing I wanted to mention was, you know, um, my wife always says that I um, I take things a little too literally, and when I was thinking about this song, you know. And and then thinking about it in relationship to the to the film itself and how I I really didn't see that kind of chemistry between Bruce Wayne and and Vicky Vale in the film. I mean, lit, you know, in the in the time frame of the film, they've only spent one night together. Um, you know, so it must have mm-hmm. been whatever they did that night must have been amazing, even though Alfred was there for like half the time. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Use but, your imagination, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but, and again, this actually goes back to the Vicky Waiting episode. I never thought of thinking, okay, well, this is from the perspective of maybe, you know, five months down the road after, you know, things have happened in the, you know, the the events that had happened in the film. So, um, you know, it's because of this show you know, you uh, you know, my brain has started firing on on different cylinders, and when it comes to like thinking about these songs and and what they mean and things like that, so I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for you know starting this show and 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 kind of lighting a you know lighting these parts of my brain that I haven't uh, used when it comes to these songs. You're welcome. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, you saying that and appreciate the compliment. Um, sometimes, you know, doing this show has really opened me and my brain up to like Prince's writing and <clears throat> as a lyricist way more than I'd ever done before. But also just the nature of the show is is like these conversations are open conversations. You know, a lot of times 
you, you come prepared with thoughts and ideas, but then new stuff happens just in the course of having a discussion with somebody else. It's just the way discussions go. And I, and, and that's what I value the most. And I, hopefully the listeners value that as well. Like you're hearing two people almost work it out real time uh, instead of just coming in each with your own dissertations ready to just, you know, state your point and here's your examples and your evidence and then, <laughs> you know, call it an episode. So sometimes it, it's like, wow, you guys didn't come prepared. You're just coming up with these ideas on the spot. But no, that's just how that's just how it happens. And I think like the best breakthroughs I've always had on the show with trying to decipher these some of these more cryptic lyrics is when we're able to do it in real time on on the episode during the recording. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it takes it takes a guest like yourself and all my other wonderful guests to be open to that, you know, and be able to bounce ideas back and forth and not come in with such a rigid, you know, um, expression or as- assumption of what a song is, because we all know songs can be subjective. Lyrics can be subjective and, and knowing that coming in and accepting that, like, no, this is written about this end of story isn't a great way to have those kind of conversations. So again, appreciate the openness and, uh, for you and and everybody else that listens to the show and participates in the show so thank you so kevin do you have um anything that you want uh to point the listeners to and like from a social media direction where people Um, can find you sure i mean i don't uh i don't post a lot on on social media but i am on twitter at um at kme 1972 and uh yeah usually i just respond to Prince things. So <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That's, but yeah, I look forward to, you know, meeting people and uh, things like that. I mean, this is actually my first kind of foray into kind of being in the Prince community. I've never like really gotten out there and, and uh, use my voice in any way. So yeah. Thanks uh, Jason for letting me have uh this forum for a little bit hey you're welcome man anytime glad to have you here all right well this has been the press rewind prince lyrics podcast i've been your host jason brenniger you can find the show on social media all over the place facebook twitter instagram youtube got a discord so we talk about prince talk about the show talk about whatever you want to talk about that's what you know the nature of discord is and so if you enjoy that format for live real-time discussions you know, check it out. I've got the um, Discord links in all of my bios for wherever social media platform, plus on um, my website. The host website is presserwine.net. So check that site out as well. You can find episodes and other things that I've written in the past on music. And uh, until next time, thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you.